For the first question, what inspired you to build Alice, the artificial intelligence? Okay, uh, okay, artificial intelligence, actually for Wonderland Technologies, uh, we like to call ourselves sci-fi solutions provider. So we always look for uh, technology fantasies we see, like they say, in sci-fi movies, and we see how we can bring them to our everyday showrooms, museums, galleries, and so on. We were inspired by sci-fi to bring uh, how we can bring uh, AI to, let's say, to the to the hospital concierge or to to the museum or to a uh, airport information counter. So that's what uh, bring Alice actually to life. So what is the aim of creating Alice? Okay, Alice actually uh, it was uh, a, a solution for a client. So our client, uh, they built chatbots and chatbots usually are used on, the, on our website or with Facebook Messenger and so on. So it's always uh, on an, an, uh, us by using a device like say your laptop or phone etc. But they ask us how can we bring it to the real life? How can we utilize our chatbot to be used uh, let's say at the hospital concierge and they have a, a case of a hospital in Malaysia, which they want their hospital to be like high tech and to utilize the chatbot. So we thought about it and we come up with this Alice. So we try to link the chatbot with the, with the user. So we have created the uh, voice recognition. So since the chatbot uh, used text in general, so we did voice recognition. We uh, convert the voice command or the voice question by the user to a text. The text is fed to the chatbot and when the chatbot answer, we do text to speech. So we convert the answer, which is a text to voice and we have our sweetie character. So we do the lip sync to sync it with the voice, with the text to speech and also to display any uh, related content. So let's say if the answer will have to show direction, we show a map, for example, with the voice uh, answer. Or let's say if you need to show a video, you need to show an image. So it will be a more rich uh, experience. Plus we can support uh, more than one language. So what are the benefits of having an AI technology? Well, uh, AI technology in general, uh, okay. People always want things to be cheaper and faster. And if you see in production, in in a lot of uh, in a lot of sectors, the human usually is the one which causing bureaucracy, which causing delays, which with doing uh, uh, a lot of mistakes or errors. So so AI will help you uh, from the previous uh, what I said. It will help you to have things faster and cheaper by removing the human elements or the human bureaucracy. Okay. Yeah. So how is AI going to change our lives? Uh, it's going to change our life dramatically. Uh, I think the big impact is going to be on the job market because I think in 20 years or around that, 50% of the jobs will be eliminated. 50% of the jobs exist today is going to be gone and it's not going to happen like in one time we will see every five years we will see a new technology disruption and one sector will lose their job so if you look back if you look at the last five ten years we have e-commerce came and disrupt the retail industry now you go and you see many shopping malls empty you see many shops closing uh, if you see taxi drivers for example they are now suffering and shouting and making noise but these guys will lose their job because they anything is like uh, there's no creative element or, or in it or it's just machine can replace it machine will replace it for sure because machine can do it better and cheaper so the biggest impact i see of ai is on the job market and the things will continue so maybe in, in the next five years uh, maybe lorry drivers will they will disappear. Maybe after that, accountants, doctors, lawyers, even I think ultimately, and and this is what uh, like uh, I'm talking about. Even governments 
uh, will be we will be run by AI government. So the government will be a software, will be an algorithm. It get all the reports and it get all the analytics and it take decision based on the analytics, based on reports, based on facts, not for political gain, not by fake news, propaganda, and like what's going on um, right now. All right. So why do you think that we need AI in the near future? Well, uh, because we people want things cheaper and faster. So to satisfy people, we have to do automation, and that is AI. And if, if we look at things like, uh, okay, AI, I usually say it has uh, a bright side and dark side. So it, it comes as a one package. Of course, there is some negative things. There is some a lot of positive things. So things like healthcare, things like you know uh, reducing deaths, let's say on the roads, because if you see uh, there is 90% of let's say of the car accident which cause death. Usually, 90% of these cases is due to human error. Is due people drinking and driving, people messaging while they're driving, and, and things like that. So if AI come, if self-driving cars come, uh, we can save a lot of lives. In the same time, we have to pay tax for that. The tax is going to be, many people are going to lose their job. So what happens if the artificial intelligence is hacked? How will you troubleshoot the problem? Well, because AI is something new, uh, Maybe I don't have a very clear answer, but like any technology, uh, it will come with its own problems. There will be some, some risk, um, but as we humans, we always find a solution. So whatever uh, the risks or whatever the, the problems that will come with AI or with whatever the threats, uh, we have to educate ourselves and uh, solve those issues. So. Again, this thing is going AI is going to make us lose some jobs, but it will create new jobs. But the question is, those people who lost their jobs, it's not going to be an easy transition for them to go to the new job created. Because let's say a lorry driver who drive lorry only in the last 30 or 40 years, he only know this skill to make him to become, let's say, uh, AI security engineer. He's not going to do that. Yeah. So. That's one of the challenges. But but yeah, like any technology, and like computers, like smartphones, there will be security straight. But I'm sure we will find a solution at that time for them. For them. So when do you think artificial intelligence will be a norm in Malaysia? Okay, I think for Malaysia, it will take a bit longer compared to other countries. Let's say if we compare to Singapore, uh, it will take a longer time. If you ask me why, okay, uh, because let's say Malaysia and some Southeast Asia country, they have uh, cheap labor or they have access to cheap labor. For, uh, th that's one of the aspects. There are the other things, but this is what I see it directly. So let's say for me as a business, for me as a government, for why do I need to adapt technology fast? If let's say for now security guards, I can higher security guard for 800, for 1,000 ringgit a month. I don't need, now Now they're coming up with uh, robotic security guards. Everything, the, the robots can go do patrols. They, they can, you know, uh, uh, they can run 24 seven without being tired or need a sick leave or anything. But because you have access to cheap labor, for you to invest and get this kind of technology, it doesn't make sense. Like. With Alice, when we're trying to push it to shopping malls, to hospitals, let's say they're paying the lady at the receptionist or at the information counter 1,500. If I come and bring my product and I want to charge 100k for it, it for them it doesn't make sense. But let's say if we go to a country maybe like Singapore, so the the salaries are higher, the cost is higher for them. It, they need technology because they need to run more efficiently. They need to save cost. So for Malaysia, I see that's why some people say Malaysia is slow to adapt new technology because it still doesn't make sense. Resources are cheap, uh, hiring uh, labor is cheap, land is cheap, for many things are cheap. So sometimes I see to, if we need uh, to bring technology to the next level, we need 
to increase the st a lot of standards in in the life we need to make things expensive but people don't like that yeah. 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 so other than hologram robot what other machines have you actually built so far okay i started with interactive screens i started with making any surface interactive like having an interactive table interactive wall and interactive board and things like that then uh, we go to hologram displays so like some of our clients are museums or events company and then because we were working with one company and then they in, they told us their problem so we come up with Alice and now we're having a, another model which, uh, which is going to be at a lower cost so we're trying to adapt to the local market so it, it will be like a smart mirror so we took like the story of Snow White, if you remember when that uh, evil mother talked to the mirror, and so it's something like this. So there is a smart mirror when you approach it, uh, Alice will appear, and you can ask Alice questions, and she answer you back, and she can show you multimedia content uh, to enhance the answer. And then we also working on AR and VR. Uh, and things like that but those are more as a client request it's not our own we don't carry it as our own product it's just a service uh, we provide to clients who, who are interested in such a thing oh, I see. so for the last question mm -hmm. will there be more artificial intelligence similar like Alice in the future I think there there, there, there will be and I think uh, right now also there, there are uh, many companies uh, entering AI uh, and in AI is not only something like Alice, like Sophia. Uh, there is a lot of applications. Like I, I have seen one, uh, actually one Malaysian company. They are in telco, but they have staff at their company who created uh, a product. It was uh, demoed at uh, Google Cloud Summit last year. So they have drones and they installed some cameras. And these drones go to the tower and it will record but they have some machine learning algorithm and it can know okay when this tower need to be maintained like how much is the damage how much rusting it can generate all these reports uh, automatically you don't need an engineer or something to climb up and see it and estimate the damage and when it should be repaired the whole thing is automated so the, ro the, the drone can go from this tower to another tower to another tower by itself and do this let's say every week every month and you can have the report generated automatically so so something like this uh, i see machine learning now we will enter the machine learning era, era and maybe for the robots it will take them longer time but for now i think we're dealing with artificial intelligence every single day whether it's your facebook feeds whether what netflix is suggesting to you what, what, whether it's the grab also according to choose the car and the price it's all ai i see mm. all right thank you so much thank you